Adventure Kids, welcome to Level Up. We're so glad that you guys are here tonight for your church service. I just wanted to let you guys know and remind you that as Christians, we are called to level up by walking in our faith and developing our identity in Christ. And of course, our level up verse is 1 Corinthians 10 31 whatever you do do it all for the glory of god you guys you have been doing a great job engaging with us sending us your worksheets doing your memory verses keep that up you are continuing to earn points for our adventure kids store even in your home so if you guys have a memory verse have a worksheet have an activity or anything of that sort that you want to turn in for points make sure that you email us at akstaff at cc-ea.org and we would be happy to give you the points that you guys have earned. So before we move on to Pastor Mike's lesson for today, I wanted to announce our top five level up kiddos. Are you guys ready? Top five level up kiddos are Danny, Trinity, Jackson, Honor, and Rhett. Great job, you guys. Thank you for working so hard to get your points for level up. All right, you, my friends. I'll see you next time. Bye. You guys like playing telephone? We like playing telephone. Do you know what telephone is? Some of you might not know what telephone is. This is a telephone right here, but playing telephone is not the same. So playing telephone is when you whisper something in one person's ear and they whisper it to another person, they whisper it to another person and so forth and so on. And it gets to the last person and they tell you what, what was said or they attempt to tell you what was said and it's usually pretty funny. We actually play this at my house, even with Ember, who's only one and a half and doesn't really talk much other than mommy, daddy, things like that, mostly mommy, a little bit of daddy. So we play telephone at our house and it's kind of fun. Do you guys like playing telephone? It is fun, right? When Ember does it, she can't talk, so she just pretends to whisper into somebody's ear. She thinks she's playing and she just says, and it's really funny because you're like, you just want to play with us, it's so fun. So. But when you play telephone, if you play with a really small phrase, like one word, it's more likely to make it all the way around and be understood, especially if it's a common phrase like somebody's name. But the more words you use, the more difficult it will be. What if you used a whole book for telephone? You just like, you read a whole book into somebody's ear and then you're like, okay, pass that on. They would just be looking at you like, what are you talking about? I can't play telephone with a whole book. That's part of the reason we need to read our Bibles regularly is because God has sent us all sorts of messages from his Bible and we want to know exactly what he's told us so that we know exactly how to live and so that we don't mess up the message. So he wrote it down for us and he gave it to us in this book, the Bible. And so we have opportunities to do it every day. We have opportunities to read it every day. And if he had just passed on one little phrase, we might not need to read it every day. But since he passed on a whole book and we want to pass it on correctly, we need to read our Bibles. So that's just a reminder to read your Bibles, guys. Today we're discussing Level Up Week 5. We're discussing, can you know right from wrong? And I know you guys are smart, so you already know the answer to that question. Of course you can know right from wrong. But we live in a society where people sometimes want to say, you can't know right from wrong, so you can't blame me when I do something wrong. I didn't know I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to steal the cookie from the cookie jar. No, every kid knows when you take the cookie out of the cookie jar, you weren't supposed to do that and you feel guilty. And if we had tails, we would put them between our legs because that's even what dogs do. Even dogs know right from wrong. Do you have a dog? I've had several different dogs. When my dog does something wrong, I know it. I don't have one right now, but when my dog did do something wrong, I knew. I would get home and I knew there was pee, even though I hadn't smelled the pee in the house because the dog was hiding. Normally the dog comes to greet me. The dog would be hiding and you say, Dakota, Dakota. And the dog, if the dog shows up, is cowering with his ears tucked, tail between the legs. Even dogs know right from wrong. Even Hollywood knows right from wrong. Are you kidding me? The people that make movies, TV shows, all that kind of stuff, and write books and so forth, those people know right from wrong? You wouldn't think it by some of the shows they put out. 
but they actually know right from wrong. Because in every single TV show, there's what you call an antagonist and a protagonist, a good guy and a bad guy. I think of one of my favorite TV shows, let's see. Oh yes, right here. I think of one of my favorite TV shows from when I was a kid. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that up right there for you guys. That is a bad guy from when I was a kid. These are actual G.I. Joes from when I was a kid. That's the bad guy, and that's one of the good guys. This is G.I. Joe, and this is Cobra. I think he's Cobra Commander. He's someone bad, I can't remember. He's someone good, he's a G.I. Joe. Good guy, bad guy. They have good guys and bad guys in every show, every book, every, it seems like you can read about almost every thing that's going on, and everyone thinks that they're the good guy, and wants to be the good guy, and roots for the good guy, but some people are not the good guy, and some people in shows are actually the bad guy. Cobra. So, even Hollywood knows right from wrong. So can we know right from wrong? Yes, we can know right from wrong. We can't use whether I knew right from wrong as an excuse, but the Bible helps us clarify things. So the Bible tells us that it's written on our hearts to know right from wrong. It's in our consciences. So your conscience, it's this little voice in your head that testifies whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. You're like, I think I might take money from my mom's purse. And then you hear the little voice. It might not sound like a voice. It might feel just something. You go, don't do that. Oh yeah, I shouldn't do that. I don't want to do that. Because you know right from wrong. The Bible tells us the fear of the Lord, and this is our verse for the week, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when people don't believe in God, they can't even have wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you must believe that God exists in order to start to have wisdom. The fool, remember, has said in his heart, there is no God. So we know that's not very wise. That's actually foolish. But Psalm 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all who follow his instructions have good insight. All who follow his instructions. Remember back to telephone. Follow his instructions. How can you know his instructions if you don't read his instructions? So we need to know what our Bibles say in order to be wise, in order to know right from wrong. Yes, it's written on our hearts, but sometimes our desires, sometimes we can have a seared conscience. When we do the wrong thing over and over and over again, we can have a seared conscience. Our conscience is this thing that tells us right from wrong. It can get messed up, it can get broken when each time that we do the wrong thing, and then we do it again, and we do it again, and we do it again, and you do the wrong thing again, you do the wrong thing again, eventually that voice gets quieter and quieter and quieter, and you're like, I can't hear it anymore. Maybe it's not wrong anymore. No, it's still wrong when you do the wrong thing. The Bible will help you clearly see that even if your conscience has been seared. So we need to listen to God's word, hear God's word, to understand what is right and what is wrong. We know it naturally, a lot of things we know right from wrong about, but the Bible clears it up for us on anything that we might be confused about. So our consciences even testify it. Uh, so also, in the Bible, we're told we're made in the image of God. So how do we know right from wrong? Part of it goes back to Genesis when it says that you were made in the image of God. So by being made in the image of God, we have a free will and we know right from wrong or else we wouldn't be judged for right and wrong. So animals, they just do what they do. They don't sit around thinking like, you don't see a tiger sitting on the savanna with his hand like this saying, should I eat today? No, the, the tiger doesn't decide, is this a good day to eat? The cheetah doesn't decide, is this good? The li you know what they do? They see something moving slowly and they go, that looks delicious, I'm eating it. And it's not wrong for them because God didn't make them in his image. He just made them when they're hungry, you go eat and that's the thing you're gonna eat because it's gonna taste good to you. But humans I'm gonna make differently. I'm gonna let them know right from wrong and their consciences and their morals will tell them right from wrong. So I made you guys different is what God says about us. I made you in my image. And in one way that he made us in his image, it's to have a moral compass, a moral compass. And the more we sin, the more we lose that moral compass. So we need again to know what the Bible says to know right from wrong. Whenever we see somebody cheer for the good guy and boo for the bad guy, we know that in their heart they know right from wrong. Whenever somebody writes a law, 
they're showing that they're made in the image of God because God knows right from wrong and has told us right from wrong. So the dogs know better, Hollywood knows better, I know better, you know better. The Bible tells us you do know right from wrong. It's not gonna be a good excuse. When you stand before God one day, he's gonna ask you, what'd you do? And I think it might be something weird, but our conscience is gonna testify for or against us. Wouldn't it be weird if the conscience could like jump out and just start talking? I don't know how it's gonna work, but the conscience is gonna say, remember I reminded you that you weren't supposed to do that thing that day. And we're gonna be figuring out what we should have done because we knew it all along what we should do. So if you're confused about right and wrong, look to the word of God and ask God to help you to do the right thing and to not do the wrong thing. So read your Bibles every day, pray every day. I could remind you of that same thing every day for the rest of your life. I need that same reminder because man cannot live on bread alone. So if you ate cereal or breakfast this morning, I hope you also ate your spiritual food first. If you don't know how to read yet, ask your parents to read the Bible to you every day. If your parents are already reading the Bible to you every day, but you know how to read, it's time for you to start reading your Bible every day. Don't you want to know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do? God has told us in his word. It's his love letter to us. He's like, you want to know how to live? Live just like this. Let me tell you how to live. So remember our review each week, right guys? What are Christians called to do? You remember? Love God and love others. Is that easy to do? Not always, not always. So let's pray for God's help. And then I think you guys are gonna have some memory verse stuff and some other stuff from the Adventure Kids staff. So let's pray that God would help us to live this one out. It's not very easy, but it's straightforward. Father God, please help us to love your word, to read your word, and to be transformed by your word as we know we will be if we read it. Please help all these kids at home that don't know you, God, if there are any at home that don't know you, to come to know you, to understand how they can be saved and to be righteous before you. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Hello, Adventure Kids. I am here to talk to you guys about how you can keep earning your points even while you're at home. So, as you know, we always have two verses every week for our memory verses. And of course, you can get a point for each memory verse that you memorize. So this week I thought, I'm gonna help you guys come up with even another way that you can practice your memory verse to help it stay in your mind. So what we're gonna do this week is we're gonna talk about how you can do a uh, rainbow writing activity. So what you're gonna get online is a sheet that looks like this with your main verse and also another sheet like this that for your bonus verse. And what you're going to do is you're going to say the verse, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his instructions have good insight. Psalm 111 verse 10. And then you're going to trace it with red like I did here. And then you're going to say it again and then you're gonna trace it in orange over the red, and then you're gonna see if you can remember it without tracing it again. And if you can remember it, then you don't need to keep tracing it. But if you still need help, then you can trace it again in yellow. You see a theme here, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, just like the rainbow song that you know. Um, then you can go green, blue, purple, you can do all the colors that you have in your crayon box all the way up until you have that verse memorized. And then, of course, every week we also have our worksheets. So we have a worksheet for our preschoolers, we have a worksheet for our first through third graders, and a worksheet for our fourth through sixth graders. So make sure you guys are doing all those activities, send them in to us, Zoom us, whatever you want to do. We love to see your beautiful faces. Okay, guys, we have one more activity that you can get points for this week because Sunday is Pastors Appreciation Week and we want to make sure that our pastors are feeling so loved and appreciated. So what you can do is you can make a card for any pastor that you have on your heart or all the pastors or whatever you feel like doing, but for every single card you turn in, 
you can get an extra point for our store. So make sure you write those cards. You can either email them to us or we have a box right outside our Adventure Kids office and you can just put your cards right in there and every single card that you turn into us will give you a point for. I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful for technology where we can be together even when we can't physically be together. I love you guys. 